Hi right, guys. It is a beautiful but smoky Monday morning here in the end times. In paradise here at Bugs in a Jar Farm and uh, on this Monday morning, it is Monday morning, uh, August 9th, 2021. The little dog and I, we need to head up to buy some Tropicana canna lilies for our bog garden but i'm out here trying to figure out what kind of flower this is basil is this one of the flowers that you gave me last year basil gave me several varieties of flowers to plant and i think this might be one of them they look almost like little purple snapdragons uh, they seem to be quite happy here and spreading at Bugs in a Jar. So, uh, any who's, but before I head off to do that, I'm just, uh, you know, I just finished my uh, video over at Collapse Chronicles about black swan events and, uh, I'm trying to figure out uh, which chronicle of the collapse to uh, <laughs> to center on it. Collapse chronicles, you know. I, I just have to. I, I just want to go through. You know, is how many other doomers is uh, are, are doing this now? As I, how many times have I said it used to be? You know, the challenge was to find anything on the mainstream media. Uh, about the collapse of a planet uh, and now it's just trying to pick out what story to highlight so I'm just going through a few of the stories that I could sit here and pretty much do a full rant on other than the, the one I picked was what is a black swan event and why are they key to the climate crisis and these are some stories that I rejected, but thought they were at least worth a passing mention. I, I mentioned this one, the next couple uh, uh, on Collapse Chronicles as well. This story from the conversation, don't blame cats for destroying wildlife. Shaky logic is leading to moral panic. I did not realize the globe was in a moral panic over the great debate on whether cats, you know, domestic cats, both house pets and feral cats, pose a danger to wildlife. This guy, this cat hugger, claiming that cats are uh, getting a bad rap. You know, it's so absolutely absurd. Andy the gardener, would you like to, uh, would you like to fill in this clueless moron named Arian Wallach from the Center for Compassionate Conservation uh, and give us the truth about the moral panic surrounding uh, cats. Uh, this other one I also just mentioned briefly over there at Collapse Chronicles. Dead zones from the Guardian. Dead zones spread along Oregon coast and Gulf of Mexico. And, uh, yeah. Uh, Scientists recently surveyed the bottom of the Gulf of Mexico around Louisiana and Texas, and what they discovered was a larger than average area of oxygen depleted water, a dead zone where nothing can survive. Uh, they're now saying four million acres at the bottom of the Gulf of Mexico no longer support life. Four million acres. And then they go on up there to Oregon looking at another one of these things. 
good God. Uh, the distribution of the now dissolved oxygen was unusual this summer. Yes. I anyway, guys, I think we've heard it before. Uh, many versions of the of this story. This one from People Magazine. Beloved Central Park owl Barry dies after being hit by a maintenance vehicle. Yes. Bird watchers in New York City's Central Park are mourning the loss of their beloved owl. Yes. On Friday, uh, the uh, on Friday the Parks Department announced that one of its most popular residents, a barred owl nicknamed Barry, had died after being hit by a maintenance vehicle. Yes, it is with a heavy heart we share that our beloved owl passed away this morning after being run over by a van driven by a, a maintenance worker. It was at 2.30 in the morning. 2.30 in the morning on a Saturday night. What the hell was a maintenance van doing driving around Central Park at 2.30 in the morning on a Saturday night. And why was he driving so fast that he managed to run over and kill an owl? I I anyway, I think we need to uh, get some investigative reporting on this story. Let's see, what else? I love this one. Uh, anybody? failing to grasp why we are so fucked. <clears throat> Woman sues McDonald's after complaining that a cheeseburger ad was so irresistible <coughs> it caused her to break her fast during Lent. She is suing McDonald's for $14 uh, I guess she went and, uh, you know, she was starving herself to death for Lent and could not resist a billboard, uh, a McDonald's billboard for a cheeseburger. And so I guess she went and got, what, $14 worth of cheeseburgers and stuffed them in her fat face and is now suing McDonald's to get her $14 back. Let's wish her luck on that one. Okay, guys. I'm just going to read the two headlines and move along. <clears throat> okay, not even sure. I guess this is just from Yahoo. No, from Business Insider. Joe Rogan says... Having vaccine passports would move the country one step closer to dictatorship. No comment. And next to that, from the conversation, uh, we have this article from Christer Beam. Uh, from the Democracy Works podcast, quote, why refusing, you know, why refusing the COVID-19 vaccine is not just immoral, it is un-American. It is un-American. So, guys, uh, obviously this guy is a vaccine proponent and even in the Joe Rogan article Joe Rogan states for the record he is not an anti-vaxxer and one more time 
I need to state clearly for the record that Hambone Littletail is not an anti-faxer. <clears throat> there is one reason and one reason only that I personally have chosen Fucking rocket science. Anyway, moving on. <clears throat> Where were we? Now this one, uh, I read every word of and uh, giving me all sorts of ideas. A couple created a treehouse RV by using a crane to lift their 7,000 pound trailer onto a platform eight feet above the ground. I, I just this morning, uh, well, last week I got insurance for the USS Maggie May, my little camper. Uh, so if it washes away in a flood, that was $229. Uh, in case the Maggie May gets, in case Maggie May gets washed away in a flood, uh, that's now covered. And this morning, first thing I did this morning was I spent six hundred dollars on flood per year on flood insurance for the Hambone Hilton. I got thirty-five thousand dollars worth of flood insurance uh, on the <clears throat> Hambone Hilton today. Time to uh, up those insurance policies. Um, let's see. And this one, guys, I almost, uh, <clears throat> from NBC News, almost did a full report on this. And, and, and hallelujah, <clears throat> all kidding aside, a top astronomer is studying UFOs thanks in part to the Pentagon report and guys it would be so easy <coughs> for me to turn this channel into a UFO uh, an alien abductee channel and all of that stuff particularly because Dulcinea uh, is really into all of this stuff okay so, uh, I guess if I, maybe if I could get back to making UFOs and space aliens the number one focus of my life, which it was, this whole UFO space alien shit completely dominated my life for years. Uh, but I finally uh, just reached the point, uh, you know, there's only so many ways, it's kind of like the point that I'm reaching with the Doomosphere. Uh, but anyway, I really am glad to see that a serious astronomer, who is this fellow, is taking this subject very seriously. I don't know how to pronounce the last name L-O-E-B. Uh, <clears throat> this is 
I don't know how to pronounce this guy's first name either. <coughs> his name is <coughs> A-V-I is his first name. L-O-E-B is his last name. A-V-I Loeb. Anyway, whatever your name is, uh, he is a professor of science at Harvard University. Um, yes, and he is taking this very seriously. These billionaires, uh, these billionaires have pitched in how much money uh, to uh, study this. Uh, yes. <clears throat> The hunt for UFOs are what are now officially called unidentified aerial phenomena. Can you say UFO has become UAP? It's hot these days, but it's too hot for the halls of academia. Loeb is trying to change that. He is in a unique position of having both the credibility and the interest in applying real scientific methods to what has long been the domain of pseudoscience <coughs> and hucksters. <coughs> so his new Galileo project plans to install a network of small telescopes around the globe to watch the skies in the hopes of capturing even one single high resolution image of something weird, as he puts it. Uh, with the help of a number of other well regarded astronomers who have signed on to volunteer their expertise, the project plans to use artificial intelligence to help filter out planes, drones, and birds, and anything else that is not weird. Yes. Um, quote, if there is something out there we need to find out. So this is $1.75 million that these billionaires have handed this Harvard astronomer. Uh, to take this issue further, advocates like Loeb and others argue that military and intelligence agencies have known, have shown no interest in seriously investigating these phenomena and would not tell the public what they had found even if they did. Um, his interest in the subject has irritated the mainstream astronomy community despite broad public interest, a third of Americans think UFOs might be alien craft, according to Gallup. And I honestly don't know. I guess I'm in that third. Uh, I do not, after, I mean, I was down in this rabbit hole, guys, you know, being an alien abductee myself for 20 years, I was down in this rabbit hole way too deep for way too long, I actually uh, am, am more and have more gone over to the theory that it's more likely that these whoever these space aliens are and uh, are interdimensional than they are, you, you know, rock solid metal craft from other planets. Uh, there's just, it's, who the hell knows what these things are, but, uh, for anybody just to laugh off this subject, 
uh, this subject of UFOs and space aliens could very well be the second biggest story on planet Earth in the history of humanity. This story is or it, it's either total bullshit or it is the second biggest story in the history of humanity, you know, right down there below the collapse of a planet and the extinction of every one of our fellow earthlings and ourselves. It's one or the other. Uh, I am still leaning towards that it is the second biggest story in the history of humanity. I do not think that, the, that even the aliens uh, have the power to save this planet, and they sure as hell don't have the power to save us. Any alien coming in here and trying to save this planet, the first thing they would do is eradicate humans off the planet. Their number one <clears throat> thing on a, on a save the earth alien agenda kill every single human on planet Earth. That is where the first and number one most important thing for any alien saving this planet and anybody acting like a fucking space alien would want to save humanity. It, 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 it is the single most egregious uh, human-centric uh, egotistical, uh, why would any space alien A, give a fuck about humans, uh, B, want to save humans, and C, not want to eradicate humans off the face of the earth before they get out there and start taking uh, our business as usual model to the rest of the solar system, uh, the Milky Way galaxy, and the universe. Uh, it is called nipping this little problem in the bud. So I hope to hell uh, uh, that the space aliens are on their way to eradicate humans from the face of this planet to save the universe. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> Some astronomers and physicists called the work a shocking example of sensationalist, ill-motivated science. How about an insult to honest scientific inquiry? Uh, privately, some of his fellow astronomers wondered if, if Loeb had lost his mind, was having a midlife crisis, or was just letting his ego and the publicity get the best of him. Yes, but Loeb feels vindicated now that the Pentagon, NASA administrators, senators, and former CIA director, not to mention former President Barack Obama, acknowledge they have seen things that cannot be easily explained away. Um, anyway, this goes on and on, but good for him. Uh, <clears throat> wrapping up, <coughs> Loeb said, quote, Why does science have to be boring? Here, we're talking about a discovery that would change the history of humanity. So how dare we push it aside? And, uh... I will be reporting every now and then on the UFO space alien uh, phenomenon. Of course, recently I'm, I'm getting more and more with events of the past year, year and a half. My newest theory is that they are going to create this fake alien invasion, you, you know, to get us all 
uh, I, I, I don't know, to wear some sort of invisibility cloak where the aliens coming to kill us can't see us. Uh, I, I, the way, my number one UFO theory is, is this one now is that theory that's been being batted around for, you know, 50 years that the nefarious they, the New World Order, the shadow government, whoever uh, would most benefit from uh, having this entire planet locked down in, in an alien panic. Uh, you know, just to just to get us completely enmeshed in fear, literally over nothing. Uh, and who would get the advantage of having every single human being on pl on the planet believing that we were being attacked by space aliens? As much as I wish we will be attacked and damn soon by space aliens. Uh, my guess is the, the, the first alien invasion will be cooked up by the, uh, you know, the guys at Bugs in a Jar, the PSYOPs. It will be the, the single biggest, even pushing the present biggest PSYOPs in history out of the way, it will dwarf the psyops going on as as the bugs in a jar uh, manipulators get the alien invasion bug in this jar and and uh, watch us uh, watch what happens when they actually get all of the bugs in a jar believing that we are being attacked by aliens you will see a distraction with a capital D that leaves the corona panic in the dust. But anyway, I gotta wrap this up. The little dog, he's off chasing chipmunks. I'm getting hungry and uh, we have to go get some Tropicana canna lilies for the bog garden while we still can. And I highly suggest you go out there shopping for canna lilies while you still can. Bye guys. Oh, I forgot to mention the bubonic plague. Chipmunks with bubonic plague. Oh God, now my little dog's gonna get bub... Are you out getting bubonic plague? Now the goddamn dog is gonna give me bubonic plague. It's a good thing I just ordered him a $62 flea collar. We're so fucked. Bye guys.